Hey, what's going on, beautiful people? I am the Grandmaster, and I also go by D-Ray. Today is an extremely special day. Today, I am not alone. Today is the second episode of the Grandmaster's Table, joined by none other than the man, the myth, the legend, OG Albina himself. Go to say hi, my man. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm juiced. So, <laughs> that's funny. Um, guys, disclaimer, I'm going to throw this out there just because it's an awesome story. Owen and I just did this three times. <laughs> we tried it the first time and it, the both of us couldn't hear each other. We tried it the second time. He wasn't recorded. I'm basically speaking to a ghost. It was. It's just a good time. You got to love the technical difficulties whenever you run into stuff like this. So I thought it was a fun little chuckle thing. Owen, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What you, what got you into YouTube? Um, so YouTube, uh, mostly I was obviously playing a lot of draft. I started playing uh, probably a month or two after Sun and Moon came out. And, uh, you know, gradually getting better, meeting new people and stuff like that. And there was a lot of leagues that I wanted to play in in particular that were uploaded required. A lot of people I wanted to play that were playing in upload required leagues. Um, so I had uh, actually Panther reached out to me. He said, "Hey, uh, you know, you're you're pretty decent at this game. You're all right. Uh, you should, you know, consider recording, uh, you know, and uploading it to YouTube and stuff like that." He said he uh, told me that he thought I could do uh, pretty well in that aspect. So I figured, hey, why not? It'd be a good chance to step out of my comfort zone a little bit, share the game that I love with other people and why I love it, and all that good stuff. So uh, I started uploading my buddy's John's League uh, NCP Wi-Fi Season One, and we've kind of just skyrocketed from there. Yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, Owen and I both participate in what's called Pokemon Draft League. So if you're here for the first time just listening to the podcast, if you haven't seen any of my videos or if you've never heard of OG Albina before, Pokemon Draft League essentially is just like fantasy football. So you get a bunch of people together and you have a pool of Pokemon just like you would have football players or basketball players or baseball players and you decide who picks what in a specific order and you pick each player, in this case each Pokemon, in order in a snake format so one person picks and then the rest of the players in the pool go the last person picks again and then it comes back to the first person who picked so essentially like we said just like fantasy football which i don't know about you man got me really into draft league i thought that that was a cool aspect of it oh 100 um that was exactly what got me back into it because i was just starting to pay attention to mons casually again and then i still i scrolled across it was it was probably a drive i'm pretty sure it was a drive um, some WBE stuff, and I was like, "Wait a minute, this is a this is kind of crazy." Um, and I was kind of feeling myself. I came off my first fantasy football championship prior. And I was like, "Oh dang, I might as well give this a shot." Um, I was getting into competitive at the time too. Uh, I played. I was probably newer to competitive when I started draft, um, opposed to like most people who usually play a little bit of standard Smogon or VGC or something like that. I was just learning about EVs and IVs, and then I jumped into draft. So it wasn't. Uh, I wasn't the most skilled player in the league my first season, my first go around, but um, it, it really did hook me in. I, I'm a nerd for stats and stuff like that. I love looking at my Pokemon's kill deaths at the end of the season, all that good stuff. Yeah, and for those who don't know the difference between Draft League and regular Smogon, basically play. So you can hop on to a Pokemon Showdown, which is a platform for you to play um, basically 6v6 or uh, 4v4 doubles, whichever format you prefer. But there's a ladder essentially. So there's Pokemon that are good and they're placed in specific tiers, uh, overused, underused, rarely used, um, essentially to give you an example. But what Pokemon Draft League is, um, again, for those who are completely new to the format, essentially, like we said, you have a bunch of people that pick these teams. So essentially, I will have my own team. Owen will have his own team. I know what he has on his team. He knows what I have on my team. So therefore, when we see each other on the schedule, we will prepare for a full week for each other. So essentially, we know what's happening. We want to plan for what we think he's going to bring. And we have to basically move forward from that. So it's basically like creating a game plan, just like in sports. So that aspect of it is completely different from getting on the ladder on Pokemon Showdown. And it's just so much fun. If you guys haven't done it before, I highly suggest you guys get into Pokemon Draft League. The matches uh, have a different intensity to them than jumping on the ladder. It, it, it makes you sweat a little different. Yeah, and you actually bring different stuff. You would bring sets on Pokemon that you would not bring to a 6v6 match on Pokemon Showdown, that's for sure. <laughs> people oh, yeah, meme, oh, yeah. People meme stuff all the time. People would bring sets that are out of the box and definitely work depending on, you know, the different situations. Um, oh, yeah, 100%. So with that, that's the cool part. 
yeah so with that being said let's 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 see let's uh, talk a little bit more about you man when did you get your first uh, step into pokemon what is your first uh adventure into the actual franchise so i started playing right around gen 3 i don't know if it was like the launch of gen 3 necessarily um but I, my first game was sapphire i had an uncle who gave me uh sapphire and a game boy advanced and i didn't really understand pokemon very well but i jumped right in uh, i nabbed the mudkip as my starter I actually solo ran the game with said starter because i didn't really understand the concept of you know catching the aggron uh you know in the cave and you know getting your zoo bats and all that stuff i uh i pretty much solo run the game minus hm slaves and swampert and it took me a long time because again i was new to the game but i had an absolute blast doing it i started over the save file uh that time i think i picked swampert again because that's my boy and i uh you know obviously filled out the team this time and i think i maxed out that time on the game I was a kid who was hiding under the covers until like, you know, 2 a.m. playing after mom told me to go to bed, just being extra quiet, turning down the volume. <laughs> Those are the good times, man, when your batteries run out and you just have nothing to do but play Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, Mr. OG Albina came in in Generation 3. Uh, did you ever dip, take a dip into the first two generations before? I did. Um, I went back and played them, I want to say, probably like a year or so afterwards. Um, I won't lie. This is going to get me, people are going to be angry with me. It's really hard for me to go back and play the OG Gen 1 and 2 games. I can mm. play, obviously, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I can play Fire and Leaf Green. I've definitely played through them once or twice. But I may be a little privileged in the fact that I'm like, I, I don't know. They, 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 It's hard for me to stay with them when I know that there's an enhanced version of them. But obviously, you got to show some respect to the, you know, the OGs, the classics that started it. Um, but I definitely played them, that's for sure. He's uh, not wanting to downgrade himself to get to the old games. Uh, no, that's awesome. That that makes a lot of sense. That's super great. Um, so, with all that being said, what's your favorite Pokemon of all time? So, if you take you know a little migration over to my channel and you look at it, there is a Salamence everywhere. Um, but you know, despite popular belief, that is actually not my favorite Pokemon. Uh, I mainly have Salamence. That's my second favorite because again, uh, I'm a Gen Three baby. I grew up. You know, obviously playing said games and uh, going through it, but my favorite Pokemon is still from Gen 3. It's going to be Metagross. Um, I didn't do a big Metagross branding and stuff like that because my buddy John has a Metagross team, so I didn't want to steal that from I love Metagross, though. I love its design. I love its typing. Um, I think it's really intimidating, especially with Steven. Uh, Steven's one of my favorite champions, too. I love his team, and Metagross really rounds that off perfectly. It's a dope mon competitively. Uh, I really do like... Um, you know, Metagross is probably the most out of everything. Dope shiny too. For the color art oh, form, yeah. the shiny is just phenomenal. The regular, oh, yeah. the regular blue to the. I was watching. Um, I was watching the anime with my uh, younger brother because he's he's right around the age where he's really starting to dig Pokemon. He's watching Gen Six anime, and Steven pulled up with the shiny Metagross, and I was like, oh dang! It was the coolest thing ever. I was more juiced than he was. He didn't even know what was happening, but I was I was jumping out of my seat. I was I was super pumped. Did you ever watch Pokemon Chronicles, the series that they did on YouTube? Oh, yeah, I've watched that like a million times. I wish they would do... Uh, so they did that, and then they did the uh, Origins, which is like, obviously, uh, Red Blue, um, Red and Blue, just mm -hmm. as a show in general. It was like an eight-episode thing, like 30-minute episodes and everything. And I really wish they would continue to do that, and they did it for, like, all the gens. I think that would be the coolest thing ever. Yeah, it's a certainly a different side, because for... for players that are our age and for those who are listening to like pokemon and still get into pokemon draft league um or anything for that matter and you're around our age it's a little bit different to be playing the franchise when you know that it's mostly carried upon kids so when they brought that stuff out on youtube and made it a little bit more fierce and definitely mm -hmm. more entertaining in my opinion oh dude yeah i expect oh yeah 100 percent. so sweet man um so let's dip into you tell us more about you what do you do for a living uh, so right now, I'm just basically going to school. Um, I'm majoring in kinesiology, which is, you know, basically the study on how the body moves, uh, stuff like that. I do want to branch out into kind of the physical, I mean, the personal training aspect of uh, kinesiology. I want to get into strength and conditioning, whether that be helping individual clients, you know, full-on teams, uh, sports teams, stuff like that. I had a really cool experience with a personal trainer when I was in high school uh, playing baseball, trying to get bigger and stronger. Um you know, help me. He actually helped me gain like 30 pounds. I'm a toothpick, and I, it was a pain for me to gain weight. But over the course of six months, he gave me, he helped me gain like 30 pounds, put on a lot of muscle, and uh, it was it was a really cool thing. It really helped me personally, confident wise, and uh, obviously athletically. So I think it would be really cool to help other people, whether it be gain muscle and uh, stuff like that, or to lose weight and get healthier and stuff like that. Uh, I think that'd be awesome to be able to do. 
Yeah, but, um, other than that, just going to uh, just working a couple days a week at a GameStop to help pay with school. <laughs> hey man, do what you got to do to get through, man. That's if you have the opportunity to do so. I, that's the best thing for you to be honest with you. I'd highly recommend that. And the fact that you are doing this from past experience and letting it drive you because it becomes a passion. I personally would hire you as a personal trainer because you're driven and I can see that from the content that you make. So you got big things in your future, man. I actually was a Thank personal you. trainer back in the past. So I've been, I was the lead trainer for a gym here in San Diego. It's called choose fitness. And, um, I was there for five years and I was the lead trainer there. So it's a good, it's a good time. It's a great profession. It's an awesome opportunity to be able to help people. And I've definitely experienced that. So I'm super happy for you and what's going to come man. So big things Thank coming you. in your future. Thank you. Thank you. So how about your, your personal life, man? You got any siblings? Yeah, I got three younger brothers. One is two and I think he's 15. I'm, they're gonna yell at me if I get their ages wrong. They're all they all blend together. Uh, one of them is about 15. Uh, the other one is going to be 12 right now. I think he's uh, coming up on his 12th birthday here soon. And then I have a younger brother who is seven. So they're right all like you know about you know five-ish years apart from each other. Got the different stages of adolescence. So I get you know the angsty teenager, uh, the excited sixth grader, and the annoying little kid all in one, which is you know always a good time. <laughs> just mom got a just house full of house full of boys just testosterone running in every room much yeah much to her disdain she definitely wanted a daughter or two she is still not happy about that <laughs> she reminds um, us about what she would have named us if we were girls about every other day that's hilarious <laughs> she's holding on to that for as long as she can oh yeah um i didn't ask you this in the first couple takes that we did but i just thought of it now and i would love to add it on how about the personal life in regards to a missus you got a missus in your life no, I do not. <laughs> no, not currently. More so focused you guys, on school and stuff like you that. You guys uh, heard it I'll here first. You. you guys heard it here first. Pokemon the Bachelor story. is on the loose. If you guys are looking for someone that is adorable, my man OG Albina <laughs> is single. Hit him up. There's a DM portion on YouTube, and make sure you slide in them DMs. Good lord, I didn't even know that. <laughs> most eligible Bachelor. I don't know if I ever Pokemon's want to put them most. on you know, anything. Oh, that's epic <laughs> get to it go go to his last video and just comment a heart in every color and i will assist you in matchmaking it will be matchmaker matchmaker grandmaster d-ray oh god <laughs> <laughs> um that's awesome man so um with all that being said um is there anything that you want to tell the audience to get them to want to come to your channel what makes you different from every every other content creator on the platform so uh, over on my channel, obviously, uh, like we've been talking, I focus pretty much solely on competitive Pokemon content, um, and I more so focus on the aspect of trying to not necessarily like teach like you don't know anything, but um, kind of educate my viewers on uh, the team building process, why I'm making the plays I'm making, that kind of stuff, to where you can kind of break down the game from an analytical standpoint and hopefully take not necessarily like you know what I'm doing. Doing, being like, wow, I need to do exactly this, but take little nuggets and bits and pieces from my games and my experiences and my discussion videos and be able to apply them into your own games where you can um, continue to thrive and get better and stuff like that. This because despite what some people think, competitive Pokemon is a hard game and it can be enjoy the team building process so for my bigger leagues that i'm putting more emphasis on i will definitely do a team builder video pretty much every week i think this right now it's the gdl which we're doing team builders for um obviously in the matches i try to be in it as you know thorough with my thought process and explaining as i can and then we have another series on the channel called uh draft league study which is basically just a series where um once or twice a week or once or twice every two weeks we will grab pokemon and solely focus on it in the draft league setting and what it can potentially offer your team what mods might pair well with it um some things you can see some common cores you might see draft around it its strengths its weaknesses and good stuff like that so if you want a more analytical side to the game and you really want to get good at competitive pokemon especially the draft league uh scene i'm, I'm a decent small gun player but i definitely do more so focus on that draft side of things uh definitely head on over yeah so if you guys haven't played draft before he's definitely a great resource for you um he cut out a little bit, but got the general gist of what he was saying, that he is a great, great teacher. So there is, like he said multiple times, that it is really difficult to get into the draft league scene. Yeah, it's awesome to just grab a bunch of Pokemon that you love, a bunch of Pokemon that you may think are look adorable or whatever you think of them, and get them to work, for sure, 100%. But there is a big aspect of this game that is 
knowing what you're doing. And so if you are new to the draft leasing, he for sure is a resource that you need to check out. I will leave his channel down in the description below. So be sure to make sure you subscribe to his channel, all that fun jazz, check out all this stuff. He is a great person to go to if you're One just getting into the big nugget. Game. One last little nugget too, especially I, for, I totally forgot to mention this, even in the last take. Um, I did a video right before Jade 8 started with my buddy John. It was like a good hour and a half, two hour video where it was actually just an introduction to Draft League in general. Um, how to get into the scene, different mm. servers you can join on Discord to like, you know, do it. Uh, different basics you're on, gonna wanna know and stuff like that. So again, if you're really new to the theme, I definitely recommend that video in particular. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that. That was good stuff, I like that. Um, yeah, so we, Owen and I are basically in a draft league together. We're in multiple draft leagues together, but there's a big one that's coming up and I'd like to announce it here. I'd like to let you guys know, for those who didn't know that the APA, the APA in general has a D league. Um, in the past, the both of us have participated in season two, um, which is kind of like the cap off of generation seven to allow us to use the Ubers of that generation and then say goodbye, put a bow on it. Peace out gen seven and move on to gen eight. Generation 8 is moving on to the AP Academy season number 3. The both of us are going to be in it. Um, so spoilers if you didn't know before. Haha, <laughs> here we are. We made it. So <laughs> the AP Academy is essentially the delay to the APA main. So hopefully one day, you know, you'll see Owen, OJ Obina, and the Grandmaster D-Ray on the APA main roster. So Panther, if you're watching this, we'll put our two cents out there. Make sure if you find some wink, open rosters. Wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You got some some solid players that have been oh, making man, a big let splash. Me in, let me in. <laughs> Open the gates and we will not turn back. Um, <laughs> that was our little message to our to our man Panther there. But uh, in all seriousness, we are going to be hosting the live draft stream. The time and date in which we do the, dra the uh, draft live stream is going to be to be decided because we've been pushing back. And the reason why we've been pushing back is because, for those who don't know, Pokemon Home is coming out and is going to be released for the Nintendo Switch. Pokemon Home is a service that is going to be uh, a paid service, but you can bring your Pokemon from past games and into this Wi-Fi hub cloud and into Sword and Shield. So if they are coded into the game, you are allowed to bring them in from past games. So your favorite Pokemon from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon that have been coded into Sword and Shield, you're able to transfer them over to the game. And thus you're allowed to bring in different move sets. The draft league scene changes immensely. So we're trying to figure out how it's gonna look once that meta has exposed itself. And once it does, um, we will have all of our stuff set out. We will set you guys up with the date that we do the live draft stream. We are actually gonna be joined by a good buddy of ours, uh, Alex Cool Rocket. So the three of us will be joining forces to bring in you guys the live draft stream for the APA Academy. It'll be here on YouTube. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Um, without all that being said, do you have any other final words you want to say, my man? Uh, no, I'm excited for Academy. I'm excited for what Generation 8 has to hold. Hopefully we can yell at Masuda and whoever else so they can fix the timer for us. But I'm really excited just to uh, really get down to the content creation grind and all that good stuff. Yeah, closing thoughts. I think that it's possible. It's funny that I actually... I talked to a couple programmers that I have that make apps and he said, yeah, if there's a mechanic in the game, there's 100% a way for it to be able to be done through an update. So if mm -hmm. that's possible, I mean, I'm not fully educated on how it works on over the, the Nintendo side and the Green Freed side and all that fun stuff. But if it can be fixed, we petition 100% for it to be fixed. So um, 60 minute timer, please, you know. Just saying. Nice and respectfully ask Mr. Masuda on Twitter. Don't yell at him, but <laughs> pretty please on top. Flood them DMs. Um, all right, guys. So <laughs> with all that being said, we're gonna get we're gonna get the heck up out of here. Thanks so much for listening into episode number two of the Grandmasters Table. If you are new here, like I said before, please consider subscribing. Hit the thumbs up button if you are super excited to enjoy the content for Mr. OG Albina. Like I said before, his link will be down in the description below. Please do me a massive favor. Head on over, subscribe to his channel, check out all his videos, educate yourself, and who knows. Maybe Draft League will be for you and you will join the league with us one day and uh, you'll smoke the both of us. You never know. So uh, <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right, guys. So with all that being said, make sure you guys have a great rest of your night and above all else, be nice. Peace.